the next chapter, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يعني, give you patience. Inshallah, it's not wasted. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to be wasted. باب من الشرك لبس الحلقة والخيط ونحوهما لرفع البلايا أو دفع. Now the six chapters before it's more general terms about tawhid and to avoid shirk. Now more specific things to be mentioned about matters of shirk that we need to refer it back to the general terms and to learn it so that we avoid it. And these things as we would hear something that among the ummah of the Prophet وسلم, those who fell in this trap of falling into these matters of shirk, whether it's minor or major, by the sayings of the Quran and the hadith of the Prophet So definitely, as we heard before, this is worse. If it's a minor shirk, it's worse than major sins. It means we have to make the da'wah and the call for people to avoid all forms of shirk and to purify their tawheed, to be away from shirk, to be away from innovations in the religion, and to be away from sins. But the worst thing that a person can do to himself is to fall into, into shirk, whether it's major or minor. So the, the title of the chapter is to wear a ring, twine, or anything similar to them for prevention or lifting of harm or affliction is an act of shirk. These are acts of shirk. Is it based on our opinion or intellect? No. It has to be based on evidences from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. The first verse, قُلْ أَفَرَأَيْتُمْ مَا تَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ إِنْ أَرَادَنِي اللَّهُ بِضُرٍ هَلْ هُنَّ كَاشِفَاتُ ضُرِّ أَوْ أَرَادَنِي بِرَحْمَةٍ هَلْ هُنَّ مُمْسِكَاتُ رَحْمَةِ قُلْ حَسْبِيَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ يَتَوَكَّلُ مُتَوَكِّلُونَ Which means, say, tell me then the things that you invoke besides Allah. If Allah intended some harm for me, could they remove his harm? Or if he, Allah, intended some mercy for me, could they withhold his mercy? Say, sufficient for me is Allah. In him, those who trust, meaning the believers, must put their trust. Uh, these are things that negates either the complete tawheed or the tawheed from its origin. We mentioned that before. How can it negate the tawheed from its origin? If someone believes that a ring is in itself, pushes away the harm and brings what is good, this is negates the tawheed from its origin. Because the ring does not, is not the creator of what is good. It is not the creator of what is evil. If a person believes in that, that negates the tawheed from its original meaning. But most of the people, they believe that the ring or the amulets and this and that are means of cure, means of pushing away harm. This is a minor shirk if a person believes in that, worse than major sins. Why? Because means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created on the face of earth are of two types. Things that are known physically by experiments and by things that are well known like medicine, like eating to push away hunger, things of that nature, it's already known. It's okay for the person to take these means. And there are the religious means. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says whoever is obedient to Allah, Allah will make ways out for him. Uh, the way to cure is to recite Quran on one's harm or wound or whatever there is from the sayings of the Prophet ﷺ. These are means, although we do not see it physically happening with our own eyes, but it's means because it's mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Other than that, whoever takes a mean that it's not known in the world like this as a mean, or something in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, he falls into the shirk. Same thing, people believing in the stars or believing in the amulets, what is the amulet going to do to the person? What is a ring would it do to a person? It's nothing. Uh, so it's all ways of depending on other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what the ayah says. That say these things that you call unto other than Allah. If Allah wants harm for you, who can push it away from, from you? Nobody. Or if he wants mercy for you, no one can uh, push away that from you. Qul hasbi Allah. This is the, the life of a Muslim. Hasbi Allah meaning Allah is sufficient for me. I do not need no one but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I do not know, need no one but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is the real tawakkul and putting the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because everything needs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why should you need anything and everything that is in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We should only need the help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alayhi tawakkul wa tawakkilun. He is the one that people put their trust uh, on, meaning the believers. So uh, also it shows how this is in a form or a context of debate with the disbelievers and how to put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone in all of our affairs 
And these things that people wear of ways of cure, if it's not in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, then it's something that is a matter of shirk. The next hadith explains the matter even clearer. And we need to see that we're not making up things here. This is the deen of Allah that it was present at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, the early generations of Islam. It's just people changed after that. People start making up things. And it definitely has, people have benefit behind these things. People make money, businesses, whatever there is. So they benefit from these forms of shirk. Imran uh, ibn Hussain radiallahu anhu narrated, أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم رأى رجلا في يده حلقة من صفر فقال صلى الله عليه وسلم ما هذه قال من الواهنة فقال انزعها فإنها لا تزيدك إلا وهنا فإنك لو مت وهي عليك ما أفلحت أبدا This hadith reported by Imam Ahmed and others and it's an authentic hadith the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم once saw a man with a brass ring on his hand and asked him what is this ring made of brass or a bracelet. The man replied, to overcome the weakness of old age. It's helping him uh, to uh, the weakness of old age. Wahina. He said, remove it. The Prophet ﷺ told him, remove it. For it can only add to your weakness. Should death overtake you while you are wearing it, you would never succeed. See how severe it is? And he's just wearing something made of brass. Why he's wearing it? Is, it? is it something that is physically way of cure? No. Is it something that is mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ? No. That means it's a minor shirk. And the Prophet ﷺ told him, Ma You would never be successful if you die in that state. Right? Because he dies in the state of matters of shirk. So it shows clearly in this hadith that wearing bracelets or rings or whatever there is, Seeking cure from wearing these things, it's all forms of shirk. And it shows that it's forbidden for a Muslim to seek cure in matters that is haram even. Drinking alcohol for a person uh, to uh, get rid of stones in his kidney, for example, it's not permissible. If it's haram, then it's haram. There are ways of cure that is halal. Uh, also, it shows the virtues of forbidding the evil in which the Prophet ﷺ told them to take it away. And the harm of shirk in this life and in the hereafter. And that minor shirk is worse than major sins. Minor shirk is worse than major sins. And that the Prophet ﷺ also shows his manners. He asked him first. He did not accuse him immediately. He asked him, and this is the etiquettes and the mannerism that a Muslim should learn. And he said to the Prophet ﷺ, what is this? So he explained to him. And when he answered, then the Prophet ﷺ told him, take it away. And he showed him the harm of what he's doing. Uh, and that how the Prophet ﷺ was very clear to him, did not make it loose so that he does not make the person upset, you will be deceiving him that way. You have to explain it in the clear way, in the nice way to warn the person from such يعني, uh, a major words than a major sin which is something that is a minor shirk. The next hadith even explained the matter clearer. مَنْ تَعَلَّقَ تَمِيمَةً فَلَا أَتَمَّ اللَّهُ لَهُ وَمَنْ تَعَلَّقَ وَدَعَةً فَلَا وَدَعَ اللَّهُ لَا Which means whoever wears talisman or an amulet would never see his wish fulfilled by Allah and whoever hangs a seashell would never get peace and rest. These are things that people used to do in the Jailiyyah and some people till nowadays still hang these things seeking that it would be a form of cure whether it's ignorantly or knowingly this is something that shows clearly the Prophet ﷺ Forbidding people from doing that. At tamaim or amulets, things that the people would hang, whether it's on their neck or on their doors or in their cars or whatever there is. And again, it's not a physical mean or religious mean, that means it's a matter of shirk. Whether it has Quran only in it or whether it doesn't have Quran only in it, it's something that should be definitely avoided. Definitely, to be uh, yani honest in explaining the matter, if it's only Quran, readable Quran, some of the ulama, they said it's permissible, right? But if it leads to other forms of shirk, and it does, then it should be avoided completely. And most of these things, it is not just purely Quran. And we have to be very careful. And there are, it's not the way of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ never ordered and so on. Uh, and you would find people making so much dangerous things to it.
Some of these things, if you open it, you would find Quran, but without a word, with a word missing, that would give a meaning of kufr in it. Because these people, they deal with jinn. And the jinn would not help a human being unless he commit kufr. And unless he curses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for example, ayat al-kursi, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al al qayyum, they take the la away. They do these types of things. And most of the things that if you open it, you find signs and words that are weird. It's basically to the chief of the jinn in the neighborhood. And these are all kufr. Kufr. Disbelief. Because no one, the jinn would help him unless he had cursed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Unless he, uh, you know, the, 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 those sorcerers, they do acts of kufr like tearing the Quran, uh, putting in, in, in najasat in the bathroom. They would do these things for the jinn to help them. So that's why the sahir or the sorcerer is a kafir. Because he would not be helped unless he would do these things. And the Muslim should have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. That's why dhikr is a way of cure and protection for the Muslim, the morning and the evening dhikr, ayatul kursi and so on. As some said, you know when a person is possessed by a jinn and he's doing uh, weird things, right? The jinn, they get the same way of uh, actions if a Muslim recites Ayatul Kursi. And the jinn will gather around this jinn and say, what's wrong with him? They would say a human being had possessed him. Possessed him in the sense that he recited Ayatul Kursi. So this jinn is going crazy as a result of that. It burns them. So that's why the dhikr is the fortress of the Muslim. To be constantly in the dhikr of Allah because there are so many enemies that they try to get to the person. And that's why those who are always in dhikr, especially the morning and the evening and making ruqya and ayatul kursi, definitely they are protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, so these tama'im and these amulets and these all kinds of things, it should definitely be avoided by the statement of the Prophet uh, A person would get the opposite of what he wishes for as a result of such evil meanings. مَنْ تَعَلَّقَ تَمِيمَةً فَقَدْ أَشْرَكْ There is nothing more direct than this. The hadith says, whoever wears a talisman has committed shirk. So it's not an opinion. It's the sayings of the Prophet وسلم, clearly. So uh, it definitely should be avoided. Huh? Uh, this hadith, uh, reported by Imam Ahmad and Al-Hakim. This hadith is reported by Imam Ahmad and Al-Hakim. And it's authentic hadith. Man ta'allaqa tamimatan faqad ashrat. Whoever hangs a talisman, he committed a shirk. Uh, the other hadith, this hadith mentioned, Ibn Abi Hatim reported about Hudayfa, radiyallahu an, anahu ra'a rajulan fi yadihi khaytum min al-humma faqata'ahu wa tala qawla wa ma yu'minu aktharuhum billahi illa wa hum mushrikun. Hudayfa radiyallahu an, minu Hudayfa radiyallahu an, the keeper of the secrets of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he saw a man with a piece of twine on his hand. Twine? What is twine? Anybody knows what it's twine? Thread. A piece of thread on his hand. Some people, they do this. They have a thread around their uh, wrist. As a protection or cure from fever. So, Hudayfa radiallahu anhu cut the twine and read the verse, which means most of them believe in Allah and still practice shirk. Although the verse was referring to the disbelievers, but he quoted this verse, shows that the meaning of it is correct. That some people, they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they still commit shirk. Hudayfa radiallahu anhu, he cut it, which shows the virtues of doing that. And uh, it is definitely a good thing for a person. If you see someone with such a thing, don't leave him in a nice way. Right? Uh, don't let it go. Because this person is falling into shirk. So you advise him, you show him. You tell him the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. This thing, who, to, who told you that it benefits you? It's not mentioned in the Quran or in the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. What is mentioned is opposite than that. You're committing shirk. And he will be very scared. And he would say he was, he's afraid if he cuts it, the evil, what happens to him. Because they scared him away. Tell him, I'll take care of it. Don't worry. Let me cut it. I'm responsible. Right? When you take it away from him and you open it, if it's something that is you know, closed and you open it and you see what's in there and you burn it. And to relieve him from such يعني, associating partners with Allah. And it shows the virtues of doing that because Hudayfa radiallahu an, he did that. 
uh, and, and it's such a virtuous thing for a person to do. So again it shows these are some of the details of what has been mentioned generally before matters of shirk. That, see the Prophet ﷺ said that 1400 years ago. How many people still practicing these ways of shirk that was present in times of jahiliyyah? Right, going back to it. Why? Because the shaitan is not relaxed. Shaitan is working diligently to get people outside the fold of the tawheed by making them fall into these things. And when ignorance prevails, when people are not learning the matters of the tawheed, then these things happen. And this is another important point, which is if you don't teach tawheed, people will fall into shirk. If you don't teach it, and that's why if you look in places where there is nobody teaching tawheed, people fall into the shirk because the shaitan is working and they don't see the shaitan and they would fall into his trap very easily. That's why if you finish the book, start it again. And finish it and start it again. And from one generation to the other and you keep on explaining the matters of tawheed and warning against shirk and forget about those who people would say, why are you talking about this? Alhamdulillah, there is nobody in the masjid here. For example, hopefully no one here, for example, is falling into these matters of shirk. So we don't need to learn it. This is all nonsense. We need to learn it, to protect ourselves, and to turn it, and to, to educate others, and to pass it on to other generations, and to keep reminding ourselves, because the shaitan waiting for the forgetfulness, so that he would enter to the people, so that he would make them fall into matters of shirk.